giving everybody time to get on. Who is late? One of those, are there other people that stayed up late like I do? This is the time when my mind really is moving. So I'm trying to see if I'm connecting with anyone. Maybe everybody sleep, I don't know. But I wanted to talk, hello. So I guess I tag people and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tagging. Can y'all share? Everybody. I find that those that are thinkers, this is the time we're normally up. This is our time to think, process, receive, and hear from the Lord. So I just want to share with those that are like me. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. We had a great, great service tonight. This is uh, my seventh year anniversary. And I'm excited what God is doing, but I wanted to share with all of you. And I want to keep it moving so those that can tap in can tap in. Um, I'm excited what God is doing. All right, I'm not going to prolong the time, but I just want to talk real briefly before I lay down and I rest and get ready for the new day. So, I tapped a few people. Hello, everyone. Can you guys share? It's late. Y'all know I don't do late a lot. So, uh, hello from the Bahamas. Hello. Hi. Blessings. I'm trying to see who's all on here. Helena, I see you. Tell Apostle Abraham I said hello. Now, Apostle Irene Bell, you're supposed to be resting. Not, you're not supposed to be on the scope. It's either you or Chris watching. But we had an awesome time tonight. Hello, Dr. Thomas. Hello, Solomon. It's good to see you from South Carolina. Sarah Thomas from South Carolina. Can you guys share? Can you share, please? Thank you. Hello, Apostle Skinner. Hi, Sharon. Hello, Dumas. Can you guys share? I just want to say a few words. Listen. All right, trainer, you on here. I see you, Anthony, Prophet Anthony. Listen, this is the time most people that are up, they are thinkers. I realize that if you're up, that's because you're a thinker. And when everybody's quiet, that's really when you can process and think things out. Um, but I, I, I really want to talk real briefly about some things um, that is in my spirit. And I want to make it very clear that we have to now make a decision. We have, listen, we have to make our mind up, our minds up, and we don't need to apologize for making our mind up. So in other words, there are going to be some people that be offend, that becomes offended because you made a decision to do something great and different than what you normally have done. And some people are not going to be able to handle your decisions, your choices, um, the way that you have made the decision to move in. Some people are not going to handle the direction you're about to go into. I'm telling you, most of the people I'm talking to that are kingdom minded, they're in a season now that they are now changing the way. They are now moving and becoming trendsetters. They are becoming trailblazers and they're not always operating like everybody else. I have identified that I do not want the norm. I've identified I don't want the usual. I want the un unusual, the unusual. I want something that's different, that is unexpected, that is suddenly, but most importantly, that's unorthodox. And I found that people that have the mindset, kingdom people, are not going to do the normal thing. That is why you're, a lot of times people don't like you. They don't want to talk to you or they falsely accuse you or they become curious about you to the point they can't read you. If you're not able to be read, nine times out of ten, you're truly kingdom. Kingdom people can never be read because what the norm would predict to do, we don't do. And so I just want to say to all of those who have been really, listen to me, that has really been in a place of being pressured to be the norm, you cannot be that. That's not who you are. And you cannot try to force people to see what you see. And this is the thing you have to understand. You can, exp okay, I'm going to make it plain. 
Simple terms. I'm not trying to be deep, just simple. Watch this. Have you ever talked to people and after you talk to them, they're like, they can't relate to you. They don't get your vibe. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and you're deep in this conversation and after you finish the conversation, it's like they're nonchalant about what you just asked and what you just said? You know why? They're trying to tell you that they're not used to your abnormality. They try to tell you they're not used to the unorthodox in you. They have become so familiar with your regular. They have come become so familiar with your norm that they can't even identify when you've elevated, when you're upgraded. So now you find yourself in positions where you're with individuals or you're around an atmosphere that has accepted the norm, but you're not the norm. Um, and you will also identify that when somebody attacks your vision or attack the very thing that God is giving you is only because they cannot understand you. When they cannot understand you, they begin to judge you. And when they cannot uh, understand you, they begin to criticize you. They begin to become analytical, critical of who you are and what you're saying. So you have to identify, you're going to have to make your mind up and you can't apologize for it. I repeat, you're going to have to make your mind up. You have to make the decision. I, I keep my mind on Christ. I move into the place that God has called me to be and I can't be nothing else than what he said for me to be. Listen, and one of the things identified, you cannot be limit. Listen to me carefully. I don't want to offend anyone, but I'm going to go there. You cannot limit your ideas into the four walls of church. Church is an institution, is a kingdom and spiritual institution that, to, that is to equip you and to prepare you for what's outside the four walls. What has happened, people have made their lifestyle and they have made, watch this, their way of thinking church. When church is a vehicle, church, watch this, is an institution to train you and to prepare you, but most importantly, to move you into a place of being propelled. And so what ends up happening, we begin to make our life church instead of making our life kingdom. We go into the church to learn kingdom, but we live kingdom outside the church. I'm going to repeat that so you, those that don't get it, you get it. Now watch this. We go into the church to learn kingdom so we can take kingdom outside the church. And what ends up happening, uh, we're becoming churchy instead of kingdom. And that is the problem. That's the issue that we're running into. And so now you're dealing with churchy people, but you're not dealing with kingdom people. Because kingdom people don't stay in one place. Kingdom people don't have the mind of normality. Kingdom people don't do the usual. Kingdom people are always on the go. They're moving, they're shifting, they're changing. There's transformation, um, there's transfiguration, there's elevation, there's promotion. And so kingdom people don't get comfortable in one place. And I'm not talking about a physical place. Don't get me wrong, because I believe in stability. Get under a good leadership, get under a good vision and stay there and be groomed in that place. But kingdom people don't settle for something that was done last year. And so what ends up happening when you're around people that are used to always doing what they always have done, they have now become into a place of normality. And that is not what you want because let me go there for you. Let me go, I'm going to make it very plain to you. When you begin to become complacent in where you are, that is one indication that you've graduated from that place. When you have mastered and become a, a, a man comfortable in a particular position, that means now is now time for you to go to another dimension. So when you get into a place that it becomes so, you become so complacent and it becomes so normal and it becomes so comfortable, what's going to end up happening? You're going to become bored. Now watch this. The moment you become bored, the enemy, that's a gate. The enemy will come in and try to tickle you and give you sensation to move you out of your boredom. But what really should have happened is that you should have moved and graduated and elevated and shift to a whole different dimension from where you are. Um, I, okay, I can, can I prove it to you? Let me go educational wise. If you have a student in the classroom and they have mastered that skill and they become boring, guess what? They become bored. They're going to begin to have behavioral issues. You know why they have behavioral issues? Because they're bored. And when you become bored, you become distracted. When you become distracted, you become uneasy. When you become uneasy, you become restless. When you become restless, you become, watch this, careless. 
So what ends up happening, you have powerful people that now have become, uh, walked into a place of their behavior, not literally being in alignment to what they're saying out of their mouth. You know why? Because they're bored. And they have become so complacent where they always been. Now, I got to go there with you. Uh, I'm going to go educational again because that's, that's, that's my trade. Now, watch this. If I have you in the classroom and you become bored, watch this. It does not mean you leave the classroom. That means you just got to learn a new skill. Now, I, I'm teaching real good. You got to catch that. I hope you heard me. It's not that you leave the class or leave the, uh, the class that you're in. It just means you need to learn a, a more higher level skill. That means you need enrichment and not just remediation. That means now you need to be challenged in what you're in. And what happens, people begin to become frustrated because they're being challenged in what they're in. And so they become frustrated and now they become what I call withdrawing from, from the situation, from the thing. And they're not operating the way they should to their full capacity. Why? Because they got stuck in their boredom. I just decree and declare that you want to now allow, amen, your formalities that you're in and the traditions and that you're in and the practices that you're in of man to make you become so normal that you become bored. Because the moment you become bored, you become a target for the enemy. Are you following me? You got to get in the place now. You say, God, amen, I've learned this. I've done this. I've graduated from it. I've mastered, but God, give me more. But when you give me more, God, I need a challenge. Don't you know when you have an opposition, that is an interview for a promotion. When you receive an opposition, you're being literally interviewed for a promotion because you cannot win a race unless you have an opponent. You cannot win a battle unless you have somebody challenging you. So I decree declare that you will not look at your challenge, amen, as the enemy, but you look at your challenge as an interview by God. And I also decree and declare that you will make up your mind and not apologize. I said, make up your mind and not apologize for what you've been through, what you've experienced. Yes, you may have, amen, made some errors and things. Yes, you may not have done it the way you should have done it. Yes, you could have said that better. Yes, you could have treated that person greater. Yes, you could have, uh, amen, avoided going down that road. Yes, you should have not, you should have let certain folks go. Yes, you shouldn't have made the mistake that you made and said yes to something you should have said no, or you shouldn't have said no to something you should have said yes. Yes. You may have experienced that, but of all of what you have experienced, of all the things you have been through, have you learned something? Has something about you changed you? Have you begun to identify that what I went through was a process for my elevation? You have to make up your mind. I'm telling you, I'm in your street. I'm in your house because right now you're in a valley of decision. Everybody that's tapping in, I know that I'm in the vein of God. I know that I'm prophetically speaking. You in a position now, you got to make some decisions. And you begin to become bored with what you're around to the point you become tired. Tired. You become tired because you're doing the same stuff over and over and over again. And you're like, God, I need something to change. Who am I talking to? You said, I need something in my life to change. I'm tired of this. This is wearing me out. I can't do this no more. And really what you're saying in your spirit is that you're bored. You're saying that God, I understand that this that I'm going through is just a temporary thing, but God, I want to graduate from this lesson. And the reason why some things are not shifting because you haven't identified your diagnose. And what I mean by that, God saying now, listen, your trial, can I go there? Your trial is not there, amen, just for a promotion and just for you to be pushed and stretched, but your trial is there for you to take the witness stand. Uh, let me go there. Your trial is there for you to take the witness stand. He said, I need my witnesses to stand. I need my witnesses, amen, to stand up to the things of who I am, which is God. I hear the Lord say, your trial is to get you to open your mouth, raise your right hand and praise me, take the stand and speak the truth. So your trial is only to bring the truth out of you, not just the truth out of other people, but the truth out of you. Your trial is to process you, purge you, deliver you, heal you, but also free you. Your trial has nothing to do with other people. I'm trying to teach. 
You need to receive it. Your trial has nothing to do with other people. Your trial has to do with you. Your trial has to do with you being jacked up and you got to be fixed. Your trial has to do with the fact that God is trying to prune you and rebuke you and change you and correct you and convict you so you can go to higher levels and greater depths. Listen to me. I know I'm in the vein of God. Now you got to get your eyes off people. You got to not, amen, be moved by what folks are saying, what folks are doing. Let them talk about you. It's okay. You know why? That's your trial. Be a witness. Take the stand. Hallelujah. And understand this. Make up your mind and don't apologize. Stop apologizing. Why are you apologizing for something God has told you? Okay. Can I give you an example? How many of you have said this? And then I'm going to get off this broadcast. How many of you said this? Um, God told me to do this, but I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just can't do this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I'm so sorry. Why are you apologizing so much? Just say, look, I, I can't do it. God said, I can't move on it. I can't move on it. We have to stop apologizing because what is happening when you say an apology before you say the decree, you're now canceling out the decree. You are saying I apologize for saying this, which means I'm saying it, but I really don't mean what I'm saying. Now, I, listen, if I say to somebody, hey, I apologize, I got to go to a higher level, I'm canceling out me wanting to go to a higher level because I'm saying it is, listen, I apologize for it. Why are you apologizing for something that's destined for your life? Can I go there as well? Stop listening to folks that don't know your substance. Stop listening to folks and digesting their words that don't even understand where you are. It's good for people to give you advice when they're outside looking in, but until you've been in my corner, until you've been in my room, until you've been on my road, you really don't know what I'm going through. And just because you went through it don't mean I'm going to go through the same thing you went through. You have to be careful with the people you're allowing in your ears to make you abort the very thing you're supposed to embrace. Because I've identified some people aborting stuff that they're supposed to embrace and they wonder why they're behind time. You're behind time because you're going down the wrong road, you're talking with the wrong people, and you listen to the wrong stuff. Stop getting stuff to satisfy your desire and to satisfy your sensation, to satisfy your wrong. Because what I've identified, and can I go there? The flesh about us is that this we look for somebody to really con watch this to confirm or to validate what we know within our heart ain't really right. So what do you do? You begin to, amen, gravitate to those that's going to say yes to you all the time. But can you get with somebody to tell you flat out in your face, no? Can you get with someone to say, you know what? You jacked up. That was messed up. You need to get yourself together. You ain't right. You need to, you need to shift in that. Go into a better place with God. You need to treat that person better. Now, you know you were wrong for saying that. You, you need to change your attitude. Those are the people you got to get connected to because those are kingdom people that want you to go to your next level. Why? Because you cannot go to your next dimension with that dirt you cannot go to your next dimension in your falsehood you cannot go in your dis your next um, dimension with something that you believe that is true and it ain't even true make up your mind and don't apologize make up your mind listen if you're gonna be awful be good awful if you're gonna if you're gonna go down the wrong path just go all the way down the wrong path don't be lukewarm. Make up your mind. Do not be lukewarm. Make up your mind and get around people that have their mind made up. Because if you get around people that's unstable and you got people that's wishy-washy, if they wishy-washy with themselves, they'll be wishy-washy with you. Hallelujah. How many of you have made a decision to do something when you got there, you really wish you hadn't have made that decision? You realize you prematurely moved in it. You shouldn't have done it. And now your pride won't let you go back and get it right. The devil is a lie. I got too much destiny over my life that I'm not going to sit here and let pride become a God. Uh-uh, no, 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 that ain't going to happen in my life. What I'm going to do is go back and make it right, close that chapter, close that door, and move into my destination. Stop looking for people to validate your wrong. Whew, I said a mouthful there. Make up your mind and don't apologize. But stop getting with people to go along with your wrong. Listen, I've been there. I, I, I went through something and I went, a whole, I went ahead and I tried to get the people I think was going to agree with me. I only called the people that I thought would agree with me. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Come on, can we be real? You only going to call the people you think going to agree with you. You ain't going to call that person to tell you to get yourself together <laughs> and do it over and get it right. No, no, no. You're going to go with that person that's going to go along with your wrong. No. So you're dealing with normalities. You're dealing with normal folks. When you deal with a kingdom person that's unorthodox, they're going to tell you stuff when you least expect it. They're going to tell you stuff when you didn't see it coming. 
So, make up your mind and don't apologize. I'm going to say it again. Make up your mind and don't you apologize. Say what you mean and mean what you say. If you're bad enough to believe it, you need to be bad enough to live it. That's what I received from it. Listen, I love you guys. Stayed on a little longer than expected. I know it's late, but this is the time the thinkers are up and awake. This is the time, let me tell you, this is the time where the spiritual realm, things are being released. See, while everybody's sleeping, I'm receiving my impartation. While everybody's resting, I'm, I'm submitting to the spirit of God because this is the time things are moving. This is the time things are moving. And I thank God that I'm not the only thinker, but I have other thinkers on here tonight that are ready for the move of God. Amen? May God bless you. This is Dr. Diana Hollins. And listen, if you're not a part of Ecclesia, shame on you. Go to my website, dianahollins.org. Click on the Ecclesia tab and join today. Join today, only $23 a month. Join, we have two sessions every month. We have call-outs, inspirational, and we have a major global revival in the month of June, June 2019. You'll hear about it in January, a kickoff, advertisement kickoff in January. We're excited, which is next month. Listen, you got to be a part of the Ecclesia movement. Go to my website and click on Ecclesia. If you can't do anything else, at least read the information, and you're going to find that you're going to be a part of others who are rejects but have been injected into their destiny. And listen, until next time, make up your mind and don't apologize. All right? All right. Love you. Bye.